I like to play tabletop role play games, and today I'm going to show you how I make some pretty cheap little baddies. So I tend to have bottle caps laying around. I'm just getting my tools out. I'm having a little bit of issues with my tools sliding around. I use Sculpey 1 and Sculpey 3 with some Sculpey Clay softener. Most of these are just regular colors you can get. I generally, because these guys are based off of uh, goblins, just make them green skinned. You can make them whatever color you want. I do have some different colored ones that are more neon and stuff like that. So I didn't use the clay softener on most of these clays that I chose. I try to use the older stuff that I have first when I'm making stuff just to start to get rid of it. You just have to condition it with your fingers for a little bit and rub it in. Kind of like, I think you can use baby oil as well. Do the same kind of thing, but once it's soft to the touch and moldable, you can start pressing pieces together. Fingers are my favorite tools, but I do also have some tools that I like to use. These are silicone tipped sculpting tools. They have all different tips on them. There's angled ones, cone style ones, like a half moon style one. So just basically use whatever gives you the impression in the clay that you're looking for. They do have little balls on the other side and they're all different uh, sizes and a little bit of a different shape, uh, which is quite convenient when you just flip it over and make a little belly button or try to emphasize uh, finger joints, stuff like that. Another tool that I love to use and you'll see me use in this video and others is a brass handled rubber tipped toothpick. That is a dental tool you can get pretty cheap anywhere and you can get replaceable tips for, which is awesome. I'm just sculpting the face right now. This guy ends up a tiny bit bigger than I wanted, so before the end I actually press him down quite a bit to make him shorter and, and fatter. But I like to do pretty basic faces and use these little tools to put in some fine details. Later on I'll do a dark wash that will make every single little time that I've even bumped them or have fingerprints or anything like that, which I, I leave all of that on there because when they're this small all that stuff just translates to like a good gritty look and you don't really see a thought out fingerprint. There is his little body. It ends up making it look better, I think, when it has imperfections because you're making a little monster, right? So it, it shouldn't be smooth and perfect unless you're going for something that's, I don't know, slick and goopy. But even that you can mostly be accomplished with smoothing with your fingers, doing a light wash of alcohol over it with a brush to get rid of imprints, and then doing a resin or even a gloss nail polish, some sort of top coat to make it look slick and shiny. But these guys are going to be gritty and dirty because they're, they're little nasty goblin guys. These are actually the legs and feet, and the top of the pants is just a, a little thin sheet I roll with my fingers. Again, really, really basic, just pressing some details. They're quite small, so you don't have to get crazy. So once he's got pants, I decided to give him a little shirt. All of my little monster guys are totally different. So some of them get clothes, some of them don't. Some of them get partial clothes or partial armor. But generally, if it's goblin style, I go for kind of like a, a leather, crummy clothing look. Putting some details in the pants just pressing wrinkles in, not going all out. Like if it was a bigger sculpture, I would add more clay and do more three-dimensional effects, but it, it's so small that it's just not necessary. And it's gonna get tossed around in the game table. So inevitably, eventually some bits will break. I know some people do armatures to try to help them stay at a certain scale or to shape and pose their figures, but I find when they're this small, and again, they're, they're just monsters anyway, so it's okay if they're wonky, it's really not a big deal, which is part of why these are my favorite thing to make. They're cheap, they're fast, and they serve their purpose well. So here I am just posing them. 
I'm just using my dental pick to push the bits around using my finger to hold it so it doesn't just shove his arms off. And I decide that he's going to be holding a weapon over his shoulder so I can give him a big weapon that's ludicrously large for his size. I like to uh, be extreme with these because uh, again they're, they're just monsters so extreme is fun. Putting a handle on his giant sword and I just rolled, you saw a second ago with my rounded, uh, it's actually like a cone tip tool to give a bit of an edge to the blade. I'm just pressing this edge in here to make it look sort of like it's a leather wrapped handle and wrap his little fingers around it, taking off some excess because it was a little too, too large. And I don't really want anything overhanging the base if I can, because that just leads to faster breakage most of the time. Some materials, like if you use green stuff, are really, really durable and practically plastic, so they won't break as easily. And if you use metal, stuff like that for armatures and other clays, are, will hold up a lot better. I have some others that I'll, I'll probably do tutorials as well. In fact, I, I did a modification one that came out pretty good that I'll probably share soon. The teeth were just a translucent Sculpey that I made little tiny spikes of and put in his mouth. I did a silver enamel for the silvering on his sword so it's got a nice sheen to it and here I am doing a very watered down acrylic black for a black wash. This is what I use for everything. I know some people have crazy formulas and mixtures that they do for washes but again for my stuff I'm just doing something quick and fast and cheap. And yeah, there's my end result. Gritty little monster guy. Love it. So if you're interested in more videos like this, please hit subscribe and the notification bell. I'm hoping to have videos out once a week. And I do a mixture of mixed media, miniature art, fantasy art. I love doing nature and animals. So I expect to see that kind of stuff going forward. Thanks.